Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this Union Jack, which is going to be 8 inches by 6 inches. It literally just fits onto the wood. You'll see when I remove the paper, it's right to the edge. So as always for me, get your carbon paper underneath, stick it down with a bit of painter's tape, and literally draw all around this pencil pen. A lot of straight lines on this one, so I use a ruler. Just keep them nice and straight. So we've drawn it onto our piece of wood as you can see. Like so. So we've got something to work at. Like I said, it literally just fits on. So when we cut that out, we're going to have to sand that shape in a little bit. And just to make it a little bit awkward for myself, we're going to do this on four levels. So basically, number one will be the eyes point of the main cross. Then we will lower it down to number two, which will be these white lines. We'll lower the route a bit in again, a bit deeper to do the threes. And then we'll go in a bit deeper to do the fours. So the fours or the blue area at the back, that will be the deepest at number four. Come up for three, come up for two, come up for one. I know, we don't make it easy, do we? As always for me, these CNC bits, just to go around the line work, I'll draw this inside here first, the deepest section, and then we'll raise it up and literally just skim over these lines. So that'll be number three. We'll raise it up again and just go inside there for number two, and we'll leave number one as it is. We'll then skim over it at the end just to lower it down a fraction so we can have a border going around it. That's it in theory, anyway. Obviously, these CNC bits do come with a small shaft, a Dremel sized shaft, so we require the good old collet there. And that's just a basically just a tube with a couple of splits on. That slot's in there. That is now a quarter of an inch. That will fit your router, no problem. Once we've done my line work there, we'll pop on some of these mill end bits. They have the same size shaft as the CNC bit, so they will fit the same collet, no problem whatsoever. And it's just a case of replacing that back into your router, and we we'll use this to remove the bigger sections. I might actually find while I'm doing this, this wood comes off really nice and easy that I might just end up using the CNC bit just to clear these out because it really does pop out nicely once you've done the first outline. And that's it. And then we'll paint it red, white and blue, of course. Right, you can see from that, we've gone around our deepest cut so far. Now, don't matter if it's not perfect. We'll sort that all out when we start taking out these sections here. So don't get too panicky if it's not looking fantastic at this stage. You've noticed I've removed one completely, and that is simply so we can remove the CNC bit from the collet. I've actually already took this one out already. And we're going to put in one of these mill end bits. I'm just going to remove all those sections that we've just cut round. And like I said previously, then we will raise it up. We'll only have these thin sections to do. So we might be able to skim over with the mill end bit. If not, we'll put the CNC bit back on again. And just go over them lines. And then we'll raise it up again. Remove that inner line. Then hopefully that should take us to the cross at the B start at the highest point of the project. So pop this in the router, set it to that depth 
We know that's right. And then we remove all these sections here. We'll do that next. Right, just before we start clearing out these sections, I better try at this one up here, if you can just see. Now it's cleared out nicely, no problem. But it's just too deep for the mill end bit. It's just struggling a bit. And that is quite a good depth on that. So the only thing you can do at these times is to skim over it, maybe at half the depth, and then reset it, and then go down to the bottom. It's a lot better than chewing on and make the route a bit struggle on the bit itself, plus the motor of the router. So you get the general idea. So that one's completely done. This one's only half been done. So we're gonna to have to go over that again. What we'll do is go over it all first, and then we'll set it to the deepest point and go over it all again. It's the only way around it. It's just too deep to do in one go. Right, so we've gone all the way around with our mill end bit to half the depth we need, just to take that strain off those bits and it cuts a lot easier. Now we've reset it again to the deepest point we want and basically we have to go over it all again. It's the only way to do it really, unless you want to put strain on your bits and your router at the same time. So let's reset it to that depth and we go over it all again. Right, we've gone around the second time. That's all nicely cleared out. I've worked out roughly, if I just get a Dremel bit to drop in one of these holes, these are 3.7, and they are actually, it's actually deeper than that. So we'll say four mil. So we're gonna come up to a couple of mil off that one. I've done a sample there. Now I did try and do it with the mill end bit, just to skim off those white lines, or those lines that will be white but it's not leaving a nice edge on. So we'll pop the good old CNC bit back on, set it to that depth now and cut along these lines, along there and along there and all the way around. And I might be tempted just to leave that on and we'll see what it's like for skimming that bit off. So we pop the CNC bit back on and do the next stage. So that's four, we're doing number three now, two and then one for the cross. Right, I've gone round with our CNC bit, literally just cut a line across there, across there, there and there, on all four sections. I've worked out that the actual mill end bit that couldn't cut these before was basically just worn away. So we've replaced it with a nice new one, so always keep an eye on your bits. Nice shiny new one in there. So we'll remove these two sections at the top and then we'll raise it up again and then do this line here. So, so far we've got a four, a three, this will be our number two, and then number one for the final one. So let's remove these two now.
Right, we've gone all the way around with our second level. Now it's all just a case of putting our CNC bit on again. And we'll raise it up yet again, maybe half the distance of that little bit there. So we don't have a lot to play with. If you do find you're running out of wood, it's going to be a case of lowering that one again, lowering that one, and lowering that one. Just give it more room. We might just get away with this one. What I've done on a previous project, if I can just show you, it's a good idea to mark the side of the wood. If I can find it on here, just about see it there. So you could work out your four depths and mark off your four little markers like that. So one, two, three, four. So when you come and do your deepest section, you'll set your router to that distance. Now that's quite a lot to cut out, so you will do that in sections. Then we come to our second bit, which is that line there. We'll raise it up to that one. And then when we come to do that line there, we'll raise the route a bit to that one, and so on. So you've got some kind of marking to go at. I've just done this by eye, to be honest. I'm a little bit thin, but we'll have enough there just to take out this section. So we'll pop on the CNC bit again, just to do that line work. Then put the millil bit back on again, and we'll take that bit out. And we'll just see if there's enough, just so I can skim off the main cross, just to give us a little lip on that one there. Okay, back on with our little CNC bit, and we'll cut this out. Right, we've gone all the way around with our little CNC bit. We've done our lines in the sections that we need, just to make that separation from that wood to that wood. You notice there, I've routed out a little bit section there. That's what I call my little depth charges. So when we put the mill end bit back in, we can set it to that depth there. And we know that's gonna be enough to skim over these four sections. So let's pop that in now and remove these bits. Okay, we've gone round our four, three, two level. So they're all nicely done now. You can see from that. It's still rough and ready. We've got to get a bit of sandpaper and we'll do a general bit of tidying up. Now, originally, I wanted to go over this final cross in the middle, but it's just starting to get a little bit narrow for me. There's no depth there at all. Now, to salvage that, it would mean lowering down this level then I would have to lower that level and then lower the background because the wood's thick enough to take it. But I just guessed mine at the end of the day. So just bear that in mind about your four little markers. We should we should have been right down there with the fourth depth, the deepest point. We obviously ain't gone deep enough, but it doesn't matter. These are just little projects to go on the side of the shed. I think I've got enough to play with that I'm just going to skim over the top of this. I've tried a bit there. So I'm just going to skim over this with the mill end bit, just enough to say we've done it. And then we'll cut this out on the scroll saw. So just bear that in mind, the thickness of your wood. Right, I'm going to cut it out on the scroll saw now. You can use a band saw, whatever you're happy with. Nothing too fantastic. Spiral blade for me, just so it cuts nice. And we'll come back when this one's cut out. And then we'll do a bit of sanding on it. And then we'll go on to the painting side.
Right, that's enough for me, as far as the sanding goes down and stuff. These are only fun little projects on cheap, nasty fencing wood. So you're not going to get anything brilliant. If this has been a bigger project, we would have took our time a little bit more. So now, just before we start putting the paint on, I just want to put some linseed on the side of this. Just to darken it back again. Just boiled linseed oil. Nothing fantastic. Remember, it's only the sides we're going to see. Literally a case of putting this on. You'll soon see how it darkens it down. Get them sides on like that. And it doesn't matter if we go over the side, the front bit, should I say. Because we're going to put paint on this once it's all dried. The side bits are more important. So we'll darken all this off. Like so. And I'll come back when this is dry and we can start putting our paint on. The paints I'm going to use, just painter's touch. I use these on a lot of my projects. So we've got our red, we've got the white, and obviously we're going to need a blue. So we just might get away with them. Not going to be the easiest thing to paint. Normally I would put the paint on and then sand over it. But obviously we can't sand inside there because it's three levels down. So we're just going to gentle with that. You might want to mask it off with a bit of tape if you wanted to. That's entirely up to you guys. So I'll finish this off and then I'll start painting once it's dry. Okay, that's it. This little project is about finished. Just before we get to the end, I've just found this that I used from a previous project, if you're thinking and are doing a lot of multi-level pieces of wood. And it's basically a piece of wood that's cut to the same size. And you've marked off our four different depths. And we've cut them out as steps. So when you get your router bit, you will set it to the deepest point. I mean, that would be quite deep to do in one go. So you might have a couple of bites. And then whenever you do the level number three, you would raise it up and set it into that one. Raise it up to number two and raise it up into number one. And that would be a lot better. That way you won't run out of wood like we've done. But it doesn't matter. These are just fun projects using scrap bits of fencing wood just to go on to the front of my shed. Okay, you notice on that one, we just sprayed a bit of sealant on. Just to give it a nice shine as you can see. Lovely shine on that one. That's nice, all nicely dry. And all we need to do now is put that onto the front of the shed, like I've just said. And this little project will be finished. It is on four levels. It's hard to see from there. Just nicely subtle. You could go a lot deeper if it had been a bigger piece. So there we have it. Eight inches by six inches routed out Union Jack flag. Thank you very much for watching.